Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Pastor Dave. Understand that I am not a religious pastor. I am a faith pastor. I make the distinction because of my, well, I guess I'll say disdain for religion. Because religion has really corrupted the relationship between what a person has soulfully and what is available spiritually through Christ or any divine figure. So that's why I have abandoned the religious practice and want to embrace and share the idea of being focused on faith. Faith is really the strength that you really draw from. That is why we are religious. It's not all of the history, it's not all of the culture, it's not all of the old sacred text and all of the dogma associated with that. That, to me, is why people are not spiritual. And what's worse is why people become conservative to the point of being harmful to other people. And we're talking about a social conservative perspective, which is in direct contradiction to the values of Christ. Which, again, I will state, are just simply non-judgment, forgiveness, love, for the purposes of creating peace within yourself, and, of course, ultimately around the world. So Jesus gave us the formula. But because you focus, because people who are religious focus so much on the rules, the law, the order of the belief system, they actually abandon their personal relationship with, in this case, Jesus, or whoever it is that you select as your divine inspiration, as your divine connector. So, it makes sense to me, so I guess by those definitions I'm really not a Christian. I don't believe that the word is the direct and literal word of God. Could be inspired word. Certainly, you know, Psalms and Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, some of these Old Testament texts are beautifully inspired. There is definitely a spiritual content to them. But the idea that God literally said everything, well, only proves that God isn't very smart because what he has shared is so incomplete and oftentimes contradictory that it doesn't serve any purpose to embrace these ideas literally. You you know, you give yourself these kind of thoughts. I mean, believe me, this is a, was an important attempt to try to help people behave better than they have. So, it was a noble first attempt, but, you know, we've moved on from there. We we can, because we have the discerning ability to know truth, we can then embrace the truth that comes to us, you know, as throughout our history. Which is why we're a better society than we were back 2,000 years ago. We aren't getting along with each other because we have this need to just stick with our beliefs, even if they're contradictory, and even if they go against your true core beliefs. Christians must, if they insist they are Christian, must have embraced the idea of not judging others. That is a basic value that Christ shared. So you should have that value. So your politics should be one of non-judgment. You should try to be understanding. Embrace the idea that we are flawed human beings and that we need to do the best we can to try to create the personal connection we with our divine inspiration, whatever that is. We have to reflect outside of ourselves. Otherwise, we just make everything about ourselves. 
And believe me, when you take things literally from your sacred text, you're doing harm to your spiritual relationship uh, with the divine. Just saying. If you really are a Christian and you don't actually uh, have the value of non-judgment and you spend most of your days judging other people because you're afraid... So you judge people who have different sexual lifestyles, who come from a different country, who look different than you. You're so worried about everyone else that you can't seem to stop yourself. You have to judge other people, which if you really were a Christian, you wouldn't be living that life. You would recognize the need for you to stop judging others so that you can maintain your strong relationship with Jesus, and you'll be a better example for other people. Not to mention the fact that you need to embrace the value system of forgiveness. Of course you need to. This is what Jesus wanted. And it is not inconceivable that Jesus wanted these things not for your afterlife, but he wanted these things so that you can do these things here on earth so that we can make life better for yourself and others on earth by embracing the value systems that he wanted us to embrace. We are weak. I get it. We're flawed. It's hard to be in a state of non-judgment where you don't judge anything and you just really try to accept nature for what it is, for God's creation for what it is, for human beings for what they are. And we really try to be better, and that's why we try to send the focus uh, outside of ourselves. So that we don't get caught up in thinking how important we are. We just push that reflective notion outside of ourselves so that we can make a better connection with the divine field. That spiritual conduit between your, your soul and the divinity around us. That's what you want. And Jesus told you that if you embrace these values, you can you have a better chance of doing that. So that's why it's important to stay in a state of non-judgment so that you don't make things about yourself. So you make things about the world, each other, and Christ, and what he wanted. So non-judgment, You have to forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Forgive just because you know that by forgiving, you are creating a better connection with Christ. So you shouldn't have a politics, a social perspective where you're not in a place to forgive other people. Like, why wouldn't you forgive Hard-working people who came to this country illegally, and that's their sin, but they're living good, honest lives. Why aren't you in favor of amnesty? Why? Amnesty means pardon. Pardoning means forgiving. Forgiveness. So why? Why would you not be in favor of immigration law, where we can actually do a better job having people come to this country who are in trouble? who come to this country because they can't live where they are come from. Possibly because of policies we have done. I don't know, but that's, that's not really the point. The point is we should be opening our arms to the world of immigrants who need us, who need our comfort, our support, our Christian values. They need us. And yet you're not stepping up. So I'm definitely focused on the social conservatives who insist that there should no, be no immigration at all. If you really call yourself a Christian, you're living in that hypocrisy. But that doesn't seem to matter. Because you can't, you're, you've allowed your Old Testament belief, you've allowed your literal word of God to interfere with your relationship with the divine. And that's the sad part. So why do we do this? Why are we always, why does Jesus want us to stand 
in non-judgment? Why does he want us to be forgiving? Why? Because he wants to generate the energy of love that will allow you to love yourself and stop all of your human instincts that cause you to be fearful, which causes you to be judgmental, which causes you to be unforgiving. When you can be in a place of love of yourself at the very least, then you are, in fact, creating that loving relation, drawing from that divine field, that power that Jesus has of loving you and you for loving others. You're, you're the ambassador that Jesus wants you to be on earth so that you can share this quality with everyone. So, and why, why would we bother loving ourselves and loving others, even our enemies? Why would we do that? Why would Jesus want us to do all that? Because he wants you to have a place in heaven on earth uh, after, after our life? Heaven, heaven can wait. You know, you'll have your heaven, whatever that is, however that is. That's not really the important part of your belief system. And if you are living just to live in the afterlife, you know, you try to keep your head low, try not to break any rules, you know, try to stop other people from harming you, and that's why you come up with all these ridiculous laws, and that's why you stand in judgment and unforgiveness, and that's why you can't love yourself or others. Well, that's the problem. Jesus does not want you to focus on the afterlife. I know, that sounds anti-Christian, but it's true. Why would he have these core values? Because he wants you to have peace in yourself and somehow generate that peace throughout the world. That's what he wants. So you stand in non-judgment, you forgive so that you can learn how to love yourself and others, even your enemies. Because what's going to happen when we do that? Well, we're going to create peace on earth. And I know that sounds terribly naive, but you call yourself a Christian. And if you're not thinking like this, if these values do not matter to you, well, there you go. You're not really a Christian. Because you don't really believe in the value system that Jesus created for us and for the purpose that he created it as well. You should definitely have embraced the notion that all of the strength and power you can get from Jesus is, yes, for your own inner peace and sense of love, but also so that you can create or help create that peace around the world. We should be a far more loving country than we are. And we have definitely been less loving for quite a while. And it is sad that we're in the political mindset that we are in because of blind Christians who have lost their connection with their own Savior, with their own Jesus, with their own love of Jesus. And that's the sad part of all this. Those four little value systems dwarf everything else that you have or understand about <clears throat> religion. Yes, the Ten Commandments are fine. Jesus clearly wants you to be a good person who obeys things, but that's just the least of it. The least of it. It is not important that you embrace the literal word of God. That should not be the focus of your faith. Your faith should be on the focus and your personal relationship with Jesus in developing that wonderful connection with the divine. That's what you're supposed to do. That's why Jesus came for us. That's the message Jesus wants you to have. And he wants you to build. If you're going to focus on just the afterlife, then you are missing out. And you probably won't get the afterlife like you think you are because you're not acting and walking in the spirit of Christ that you should be. So I know a lot of people will get upset at what I'm saying, which is fine. You know, hey, that's the nature of a faith pastor. He's got to challenge the traditional notion of religion. 
And I feel that I have to take back that Christian term because right now it's terribly abused. Being a Christian is being someone who has to embrace the literal word, the literal word. Have you read the Bible? I don't think so, because if you read the Bible, there's lots of problems with it. But the real beauty, the real spiritual development comes from what Christ tried to share in his brief time on earth. So I ask that you give up the notion that you somehow have to, that the, that the main part of you being a Christian is your belief that God wrote the Bible literally and that the, every word was just transposed by or transcribed by just people who had this kind of connection. You know, they just turned on the dictaphone and there's God talking and this is all and exactly what he said. That is both naive and destructive. It is of no use for you and your spiritual development to believe that. So why do you believe it? I don't know why. But you shouldn't. You should let it go. Literal word of God is of no use to you. It doesn't help you spiritually. And it actually makes you or puts you in a place of a sense of superiority and not in, and you're not walking in the path of Christ. He doesn't want you to be that type of person. He wants you to be a non-judging, forgiving, loving person who, if embraces those values seriously, will develop that peaceful connection to the divine and will help others make that peaceful connection. That's your mission. That's what being a Christian is. That's why you love Christ. None of that other stuff matters. All of the rituals, all of that, that doesn't matter. None of that matters. You walk in the spirit of Christ. You are walking in non-judgment. You are forgiving. You are loving yourself and everyone else, including those that are unlovable. Because you know it's worth it. Because that's where the peace is going to come from. That's where that power of the spirit is going to actually move in you. And you're going to create peace in yourself and around the world. That's what being a Christian is. All that other stuff, garbage. Thank you for listening. I hope you heard me because this is an important lesson. I will return. Please feel free to contact me. I'm at Monk Living at gmail.com monk m-o-n-k l-i-v-i-n-g at gmail.com thank you again